Hey folks, this is Abel James, and welcome to the Fat Burning Man Show, where we talk about real food and real results. Every once in a while, I get a note from one of you listeners that really affects me. And uh, recently I've been getting a lot of those, especially because I've opened up a little bit and had that emotional show where I described my near-death experience from carbon monoxide poisoning just a few weeks ago. And one of the people who helped me through that turned out to be James Lugo, the guest this week. And I'm going to start with his story because it goes back a little while. So about three years ago, at 51 years old, James... Uh, a music producer and also someone who was a coach on American Idol and a very talented guy in his own right. Um, He weighed almost 300 pounds and he was bedridden at just 51 years old. And so on August 1st of 2015, James began his journey and you'll you'll hear why some of the reasons are, are enlightening. He began his journey to lose 100 pounds and gain his health and his life back. And when he sent me his picture of of what had happened over the past few years when he really dialed in his health after being at the trough of his life, hitting rock bottom and not knowing if he was going to make it out, uh, it's been exceptional to not only get to know James in the past few months, but also he's a vocal coach uh, and, and was on American Idol for many years. And so as a singer myself, I decided to study with James. And so we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. And in fact, for my new book, my new audio book, Designer Babies Still Get Scabies, James even went along to uh, to help me out and do some extra compression on the audio book because he's, uh, like I said, he's a very talented dude. So anyway, When you folks get in touch with me, you never know what's going to happen next. But my best collaborations over the over the years with Denny Hemmingson making the uh, Swamp Thing music album with the guys from the Tim McGraw band, Um, you know, George Bryant. We did all those cookbooks together and many podcasts, James Lugo, some music stuff and the audio book. And uh, there are a lot of other little little things that are coming together. Chase. You better be listening. We've got a new editor uh, who's also helping us put out video content. So there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening right now. And I love getting, um, you know, people from our own community like James and, and Chase and Denny and others on this show so that you folks can learn from them. Because, yes, I was overweight and sick, but now that's about a decade ago. And I certainly was never a hundred pounds overweight. And I never struggled with some of the deep issues that some other folks on this show have struggled with. But even more than that, you know, when you're a year or two out from rock bottom or being at the worst of your health, or you're a year or two out from reaching peak health after that, it's it's much more fresh in your memory. You've done it in a different timeline. You know, it was a different world back in the the you know, between 2000 and 2010 is much different than 2010 to 2020, where we are now. So if you wanted to lose 100 pounds 10 years ago, it's, it's a different beast than now. So you're going to learn a lot from James on this episode. As a reminder, hang around till the end of this episode, and I'll share a few poems from my new book with you. In today's conversation with James, we're going to be chatting about staying fit and healthy in the entertainment business, especially when you're uh, on TV or when you're in the studio or you're filming with multiple people. Sometimes the days can be exceptionally long. A lot of times you don't even get breaks for meals. So that's a that's a massive challenge, especially if you're trying to not just maintain your health during it, but actually dial in your health. So there's a lot to learn from James in that regard. We also talk about uh, how to prep 19 meals in 60 minutes flat overcoming food addiction, and tons more. Before we get there, here's a review that came in from Bradley on iTunes. He says, This is by far my favorite podcast in the health and fitness genre. It offers great thought-provoking discussions in what it means to be healthy. The guests all have impressive resumes and backgrounds in their respective fields. What sets this podcast apart is how accessible the information is. Anyone with impressive backgrounds can relay information from their field, but if it's not done in a way for people to digest it, it's useless. This is definitely where Abel's talents as a host moderator comes in. Also, in reducing these complex ideas and concepts down for the average person, the podcast provides useful tips and insight to incorporate changes into your daily life. I highly recommend this podcast and look forward to the new episodes. Bradley, thank you so much for the kind words. You 
you said some very interesting things in there that I'd like to talk about just briefly here, because I agree when you go out and you look in the health and fitness space, a lot of the more sciency based shows or physiology based shows or whatever rabbit hole you want to go down, they don't make this information accessible. And a lot of the hosts try to use this jargon to try to make themselves sound a lot smarter than they actually are. And that only defeats the purpose of communication. You know, having gone to an Ivy League school and and studied research and learned how to write in the academic way and speak in the academic way, the only thing that's going to do to 90, 95% of the people out there is completely alienate and confuse you. And so I've done my very best not to speak with jargon and to make, you know, my books easy to read. It's harder to write a book as an author that's easy to read than one that's hard to read, full of scientific jargon that makes you sound smart. So whenever you see some guru out there just like spitting out all this, all these words that you don't understand that are about something that actually is quite simple, like eating your vegetables or going outside and exercising, keep in mind, this doesn't have to be complicated. And a lot of times, even if the information is good, if you don't understand it, it's not helping you. So I totally agree. And that is by design, Bradley, and, and those others of you who are listening out there. And I'll do my best to make sure that even if I have someone who's an absolute brainiac on the show, who's full of that scientific jargon and all these words that we don't understand, uh, we can bring it down home to where the rubber meets the road and tell you what to eat for breakfast or not to eat for breakfast the following morning. You know what I mean? That's my goal with this show. Honestly, truth be told, the reason that I got fat and unhealthy back in the day is because I was confused by the scientific jargon and all the people who said that they had the answers and all the fake gurus out there. So I never, ever want to be part of the problem. I, I do make mistakes, but I really appreciate those of you who tune in for the reasons like you describe here, Bradley. So once again, thank you so much for writing in. If you have anything that you'd like to communicate to me, uh, the best way to do it is going to be outside of social media because we've been shadow banned and censored on most platforms. <laughs> so you can always find me at fatburningman.com. If you sign up for the newsletter, respond to the email that I send to you. My email is going to be able at fatburningman.com. Just reply to that email. Let me know how you're doing. Ask me questions. And who knows, it might end up on this show. You might even pick out the very next guest. And don't forget, if you have a quick minute, to leave a review wherever you're watching or listening to this show. Uh, and even better than that, if you, th if you can think of someone who would appreciate any episode of this show from the past or some of the stuff we'll be talking about in the future, please just take a quick moment to share Fat Burning Man and this show with friends uh, and, and family members. Don't spam them and don't put it in their face or anything like that, but uh, just a quick reminder that that helps more, even more than clicking like and su subscribe on all these different platforms because that's what the platforms want you to do. It's more important to humanize this whole thing and share it with real people and talk about it with real people, not just click like and do whatever Facebook wants you to do. So anyway, yeah, as time goes on, I'm getting more and more bitter about social media. But that's what happens when you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers that they won't even show your stuff to anymore. So it's a weird, weird world in that way. But if you'd like some of my deep thoughts on the subject and censorship, make sure to check out Designer Babies. It's hit number one in humor and also top of the charts in poetry in multiple countries, Germany, Canada, the US, uh, the UK. Being top in poetry in the UK is pretty cool because it was above Shakespeare and some other stuff like that, which is obviously not fair. I don't think he's got a big marketing department these days, but uh, it's, it's certainly very encouraging and I could not do any of this without you. So let's read a quick review of this book that came in from a past guest of the show, the author of Fearvana, Akshay Nanavati, who says, a highly entertaining, brilliantly crafted, and deeply profound look at the current state of the human condition. It will challenge you, confront you, and perhaps even shock you. But whether or not you agree with it, it's near impossible to deny the sheer genius of this poetic masterpiece. The wit and wisdom within these pages will stay with you long after you put this book down. Then another quote from my lawyer, and this is true. He says, no comment. <laughs> so in case you don't know what this book is about, it's, uh, well, let me just read the, the summary for you. 
In this fiery, imaginative, and daring debut poetry collection, New York Times bestselling author Abel James leads us on a tongue-twisting, brain-tickling romp through 21st century notions of progress. His lyrical, whimsical style beckons us on the quest for truth and healing in the age of memes, Me Too movements, trolls, and Trumpisms. Punching up at patriarchy, tyrants, and the dominant social order, James deftly dismantles blind patriotism and the illusion of American superiority. His urgently searing satire of tech titans and the surveillance state is tempered by playful antics, emotional depth, and a bold reverence for nature. It's a subversive, hypnotic little book that confronts dark questions, conspiracy theories, magic, and history's mysteries with dazzling flurries of irresistible rhymes and ridiculous rants. You'll meet indestructible robots, world-conquering pumpkins, $300 million fighter jets, doggy eating dinosaurs, judgmental Sasquatch, and for the very first time ever, the dastardly Zuckerburglar. Speeding through true stories of eels on cocaine, you'll ultimately discover why designer babies won't save us as we tumble toward the singularity. Not for the faint of heart, this book will challenge and entertain you. Please press any key to continue. That's an inside joke for readers of the book. So anyway, if you're interested in my new book, please go to designerbabiesbook.com. And when you do, you'll figure out exactly how you can get a free copy of the audiobook when you buy the paperback version. We're also giving away a ton more freebies, over 800 or even a thousand bucks worth. We're giving away autographed copies of the book. We're giving away six months supply of future greens and other goodies from wildsuperfoods.com. As well as if you're into reading eBooks on uh, Amazon, on the Kindle, I'm running a whole bunch of different free promotions where we've got like a half dozen different books. The Crock-Pot book, the Paleo Crock-Pot book that I did with uh, George Bryant. That's number one again in I think three different categories in, in cooking and paleo diets and a number of other ones. As well as my book, Intro to Paleo. That's been free, hitting number one in a number of categories. So if you want all of these things for free, make sure you're signed up for the newsletter because uh, as much as I'd like to make most of them free all of the time, I think Amazon only lets you do it like five days every so often. So um, I'm somewhat limited by when I can do the discounts and the freebies on that platform. But if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll know exactly when it happens and you'll get all your free books. So many more to come. Much fun. And I always appreciate your support. I can't do any of this without you. So make sure you stick around to the end of this episode and you'll hear some poetry straight from the horse's mouth. All right. On to the show with Mr. James Lugo. We're going to talk about food addiction, binging, and weight loss, how to prep 19 meals in 60 minutes, staying fit and healthy when you're in the entertainment business, what James learned about weight loss in the 80s that hurt him, exercises for singers that everyone should do, the benefits of being in shape for music and performing, and tons more. And you know what? Uh, Just because we've been in touch, James has recently sent me a couple of of text. So I'm going to catch you up. We're going to do some time traveling, but I'm going to say one more time, all of those who have lent your support and your messages, your phone calls, just checking up on me and all of that, you know who you are, especially after the past four months as we recovered from the poisoning. It saved our lives, you know, the the help from family and friends, just the little things when you check in on us and, and make sure that we're okay. We were in an extremely vulnerable and damaged position, and we're so thankful to have recovered, but we couldn't have done it without you. And James, that includes you. So anyway, (laughs) he wrote me this a few weeks ago, and I thought it was worth sharing because even after someone loses, you know, 100 pounds or really gets their health dialed in, there are still many questions that come up. And often it becomes an issue of how do you feel now? Not just how do you look and, and where's your weight at, but like, how are you actually feeling? How is your mind? How's your motivation? How's your emotions, your spirit? So this is what he said uh, after checking in on me. Things are good here. Back playing and singing. I had a question. I did keto on and off while losing the weight, and it always ended with me not into it. I again started it 18 days ago, and I just feel dead. Everything is laborious. 
singing, dealing with kids, etc. I'm eating as much fat as my palate can handle. This is the strictest I can be. The meter says I'm in ketosis, but I'm just miserable. And honestly, I'm getting tired of the food. What do you think? What are you doing? I lost the weight doing much of what was in the warrior diet and what I learned from you in the podcast. I feel like I just need to get back to what works. My response, sounds like you need a sweet potato, my friend. And he wrote, LOL, that's funny. I had carbs today and I feel like a golden god. That's what I'm talking about. I said back. So anyway, that just goes to show you that you're never there. You never arrive. And just a quick little comment on the keto thing, because it's so trendy right now and it's the biggest fad. Doing keto, even though it's a flashy thing and all these marketers are just like plastering it all over the internet and buying up the word and making keto the biggest thing ever. It's on its way down. If you look at Google Trends and all this other stuff, the fad is starting to pass. What I've noticed is most people who try to pursue keto are just eating tons of fat and tons of meat and that's about it. You know, it doesn't really get more granular. It doesn't often have more strategy than that. And it doesn't have <laughs> more heart than that. And I think eating at its best should be a spiritual experience that you're expressing gratitude for before and during. And if you're eating nothing but meat, eating other animals with faces and eating nothing but fat, which is just, you know, processed MCTs or coconut oils. And even if they're healthy fats and, and lards from pasture raised animals, eventually you're going to get over it. Fat is disgusting once you've had enough. You know what I mean? It's like once you've eaten a big fat steak that's grass fed and perfect, you don't want any more. And that's your body saying, cool, enough for the meat for now. More important than being low carb or keto, um, I don't test my fat burning man is not into measuring keto or ketosis with different, um, you know, peeing on sticks or using your breath or anything like that. It's really getting into the weeds when you don't need to. And I see a lot of people who are trying to lose weight by being in strict ketosis and I'm really not sure that that's the best thing for your spirit and for your emotions. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. Even if you're trying to lose weight, it'll come back if you don't nail the lifestyle and really learn how to cook, uh, prepare, and make sure that these healthy foods are all around you so that you can eat them for the rest of your life. And good luck feeding your family on keto. Good luck feeding kids on keto. Not that going keto for short periods is a bad thing. I'm often by usually because I'm I'm fasting or eating about one meal a day, which I've been doing for about a decade now, I will dip in and out of ketosis as babies do, as mothers do, as animals do, and carb cycling is kind of one way to counteract the negative effects of going too keto for too long. And I'll just I've ex expressed this before on the show, but if you're feeling low energy if your sex drive goes away, if you feel like you're just not yourself, in a lot of cases, that's because your body isn't creating the right hormones. You don't have the correct hormonal balance for what makes you feel good. And often the reason for that is because you're not giving your body the raw materials it needs in order to feel good. So sometimes that's a sweet potato. I remember having uh, Tim Ferriss on the show a while back. I want to say this was his third interview on the show. I haven't had him on in a while, but he was doing strict keto at the time. And he asked me why he was having such trouble sleeping. And I basically said, anytime you hard shift into doing something like keto, or even if you've been doing it for a very long time, sometimes other parts of your life will suffer because there is no end. There is no perfect diet. You have to adapt. You have to cycle. You have to eat seasonally just like our ancestors did. So anyway, let's get to the show with James and don't forget to hang around to the end of this show for a special poetry reading. Thanks again. Let's go hang out with James. All right, folks, I am thrilled to be here today with James Lugo, a musician, producer, and vocal coach out of Nashville. He's one of the most sought after vocal coaches in the music industry, including work on American Idol as analyst and coach. In the late 2000s, though, James started putting on weight, and on August 1st, 2015, at 51 years old and almost 300 pounds, he was bedridden, and his journey to lose 100 pounds and gain his health and life back began. James, thank you so much for joining us, man. 
Oh man, it's I'm I'm, I'm it's fun. I'm, I'm so glad I'm here. Yeah, uh, there's going to be so much to talk about. But anyway, uh, you, uh, I was explaining before we started recording. Just like every once in a while, I get I get a note, usually from a musician, that just like goes straight to the heart about uh, you know how their lives have kind of changed based upon listening or, or connecting or, or what have you. And so uh, yours was certainly one of those, but I don't want to spoil it. So just like catch us up, tell people uh, what went down. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, four years ago, I was, you know, as a kid, I was kind of skinny and I, I gained a little weight in my late teens and then I lost it. And then I went into, you know, rock star mode and through the eighties, I was like 145 pounds and shredded and wow. playing music and, you know, and, uh, all of a sudden it just started creeping up on me, you know, in, into my kind of late thirties. Um, and through my thirties, through, I guess, four, yeah, like thirties into my forties, I was on, I was doing a lot of TV too. So it was like, I was starting to gain weight on a couple of shows and it was, you know, it was, uh, humbling or humiliating. Sure. And, um, yeah, it just, I don't, I mean, without getting too intense, I just, I was, I was like a broken person. It was weird. And, um, I was living in, I was, I'd been living in Hollywood for about 25 years. And, uh, in about 2011, I left, I just, I didn't want to have anything to do with the music business. And I, I moved to North Carolina and I was just working there and produ you know, doing Skype voice lessons and producing and, but mostly a lot of local people. And I just kind of had given up. It was weird. And, uh, and then it was just, it was all about Taco Bell, man. Yeah. Taco Bell, Taco Bell, man. Like I, you know, I just, uh, you know, sitting in front of a computer and eating junk food mm -hmm. pretty much summed up my life. And yeah, I was, I was, you know, very depressed and angry and I was married and I, my, we had two little kids and, um, I was really a wreck. I mean, I had sleep apnea and, you know, I was hypoglycemic. I had chest pains. I had eczema. I had just had meniscus surgery on my knee. I was traveling around for like these TV, like I was traveling to Europe, like hobbling. And you know what it's like when you get on a plane and you know, you're going to be sitting on this plane for like 10 hours and you're the you're 300 pounds sweating guy with long hair and you're walking down the aisle everybody is looking at you like whatever you do do not sit next to me yeah. <laughs> you know and you know so yeah i was kind of a mess and uh and then you know about exactly 4 years ago now um i got pneumonia and i got really sick and and i, I came to a realization that I had no immune system. That, mm. that was what I, cause, cause it was like, they were doing steroids and amoxicillin and, you know, you know, anti-inflammatories and injections and yeah. all this and nothing, like I wasn't getting better. And, um, a couple of the doctors were like, and I also had like a heel spur at the time, you know, it was, it was bad, but I had a couple of doctors were like, you know, like, what's your diet like, which that's kind of like code for like, you don't look so good. Yeah. Especially, right? Yeah, especially when a doctor says like, that. <laughs> what is it that somebody that looks like you eats, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was it, man. It was just a terrible, terrible time. And I spent three months in bed and um, I had a realization that I was going to die and that somebody else was going to raise my kids. And my kids at the time were like, I don't know, two and four. Wow. Like little dudes, yeah. little dudes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I, I always had this funny thought. I thought, like, what if my wife marries a DJ? <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, it's like, you know, you have this <laughs> that is every like, musician's like, nightmare. That's hilarious. Like hip hop dudes. <laughs> Not that they're all hip hop, but, you know, it's just funny stuff you think about. Oh, but, man. But anyway, that was it. And I, I had this realization that um, that I was going to die and uh, that I wasn't going to be there to, like, you know, protect my wife and raise my kids and, you know, do my deal. And uh, I was laying in bed. And I mean, I was in bed for months. My assistant was like, 
covering at work and doing sessions and, and, and I was working at home too. So I would like go down to the basement and teach for a couple of hours and then come up. And then I was, I was literally teaching Skype from bed. Like that's the guy had a little piano there. You know, I was like, da, 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 da. And, um, but mostly I was not working and, um, uh, I, so I, I, I start watching all these movies on iTunes. I have my laptop in bed and I'm buying these movies, you know, um, things about paleo, things about all this type of stuff. It's like, I'm getting into, I'm like, I, yeah, I'm 300 pounds laying in bed. I'm getting into CrossFit. Yeah. That's another story, but <laughs> like I'm getting into this whole culture of like, I want it. And then I get the movie fat, sick and nearly dead. And I watched that movie every single day. And I mean, all day, I watched that movie a thousand times. Wow. And my wife bought a masticating juicer and August 1st, 2015, I started drinking kale and it wasn't nearly as nasty. And I'm not, a, I wasn't like a natural vegetable kind of person. I was a very kind of pizza burger, you know, sure. potato chip guy. So, but I was like, oh, this is cool. So I did about 28 days, 24 days, not perfect fast, but a lot, like majority, you know, eating a little bit here and there. And, uh, after about a week or two, I was like, I was out of bed. It was weird. Wow. And I had this wheezing cough that was like, you know, when you have a pneumonia for like months and months on end, uh, all of a sudden it was like, I could feel the last of it coming out hmm. and I'd lost 20 pounds and I looked younger and I didn't want to die. And that's how it started. Wow. And I got in bed. And, uh, but, but August 1st, 2015, I weighed in at 275. That's that picture. That's the before and after that was that morning. Yeah. And, um, and I was, I mean, I was really hopeless. I mean, I, I don't even know, you know, you think about like, what, what is like, what, where did I have any confidence at that point? Right. I, mm -hmm. I mean, when you're 51 years old and you're morbidly obese, you've tried to lose weight before. I mean, I've done everything. You know, you, you name it, master cleanse, you know, South Beach, fat, you know, isogenics, like you just name it. I did it. I did all kinds of weird stuff and nothing worked. And then, uh, yeah, so there you go, man. So what was that stuff that you like learned uh, in the 80s, like back in the day? Uh, oh, well, yeah, that, that was the thing, too. Like I kind of grew up in the gym business. I was a bit I was like oh, really? kind of an athlete too. Yeah, played baseball, tennis little football, I wrestled, wow. like I was into it. And my dad owned a tile store and next door to the tile store was a gym. And the dude that owned the gym was also like a shredding guitar player. So he cool. had a huge impact on sure. me. And might I say, the guy's almost 70 years old and he looks like he's 25. Wow. That's how it dude, works. Yeah. Just, you know, focused. But so I, but, but so I started to manage the gyms. I started working in the gym. Yeah. And the gym business was, so here's, here's how to lose weight in the eighties. Get up, have a big breakfast and ta tailor down your carbohydrates as the day goes on. Right. Because you need your most carbohydrates in your first meal, because that's when you need, you know, you're, you're going to be expending them. And then as your day progresses and you start to wind down and your metabolism drops, you get rid of the carbohydrates uh, split cardio. That was another big one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, weed or shakes. Yeah. Your shakes, you know I mean? Cause it was, it was all, I mean, a lot of that was kind of pushed by that whole agenda. And, you know, it's like, well, if you tell people to eat six or eight meals, like who can eat six or eight meals, but you know, we can do some shakes. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was doing the whole deal, man. So then when I started to try to lose weight, I was trying to always lose it with this old thinking like breakfast is the most important meal, carb up first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. split cardio. That was another, cause I was kind of integrated in with the bodybuilding world. And that was a big thing with them, split cardio, you know, and, uh, you know, supplements and, you know what I mean? It was so weird. Oh my God, Abel. About a month ago, I had to go find something at the vitamin store. Something for my wife, I can't remember what it was. Whatever it was, the flea could, oh no. I'm walking down the aisle and I walk past the fat burner. Mm -hmm. And I look and I'm like, 
oh my god, I used to think that this was the like I used <laughs> this used to be what I I thought hydroxy cut was going to save me. Yeah. Like I really thought like somehow that I was gonna figure out the pills and I you know which, you know, yeah, so, but that's what, not how what I lost. Changed? How did, yeah, how did that happen, though? Because that's so interesting, and I think so many people are there right now, right? But, like, the truth is on the other side where you yeah, come to now. How? it's weird, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird. It's like, you know, you know, well, so one of the biggest, most influential things in my losing the weight is the podcast with you and Amir Rosick. Wow. I watched that podcast a thousand times. I know every word of that podcast. Like, <laughs> and he talks about what something that you say that something to the effect of just because everybody says something doesn't make make it true. Mm -hmm. It just like like at one point everybody thought the world was flat. It didn't make it true. It made it popular, right? So everybody, if everybody's saying that. You got you need to eat eight small meals a day, split cardio. You need to, breakfast is the most important meal. You got to carb up first thing in the morning. As soon as you, your feet hit the ground, you need carbohydrates right. because you're going to die if you don't eat them. You know your brain can't function without you. So that was what was perpetuated, but a lot through that and through. I mean, you were like, well, we talk, I, I told you this. I mean, you were huge. That's why you know. Yeah, you were a huge influence on me. And it was a number of the podcasts, um, you know, the one with, with Ori Hoffmeckler and getting into yeah. the warrior diet. He's great. And the one with Amir uh, and John Kiefer. And I got into all that. Yeah. And, you know, I started getting into trying to get into Bulletproof Coffee. I mean, I did it all. I mean, I'm like, a, you know, yeah. But, uh, but, but the, the one with Amir was the one that I watched every single day because – the thing that I thought with that podcast was I have to come up with a solution for me and I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like reading the, uh, the primal blueprint, you know, the whole Mark Sisson, like 80, 20 thing. I'm like, yeah. well, I can, I can wrap my mind around 80, 20, like uh, people that are about perfection, like I, that, that's great, man. But that, I don't think that's ever going to be me. Right. Because you know, when I go to New York City, I'm getting a slice of pizza. It's going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're the, the what, things that you guys were talking about really resonated with me, which was like, you know, find a place that you can function at and make that work and, and, and stay on point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Friday comes, you drift off, you know, it was like the, you know, people do the dark chocolate or the wine or they do, you know, you just keep moving right back into, into that spot. And that was what made sense to me because the perfection thing always hurt me. It always made me feel down because as soon as I failed, then it was like, boom. Yeah. And another thing, another one of the podcasts that I've been watching a lot again, um, is, is the one with, with James Clear. Yeah. And I was listening to it this morning because I've been shifting my workout and I've been back listening to it. And he talks about where we have this arbitrary goal. Then if we don't hit it, we just fall. You know, we go, oh, I stink. But you don't realize like what, you're not where you were. You know, mm -hmm. you, this was this is where you started. This was your goal. Like you wanted to go all the way to here. Well, you still got to here. So like, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of integrated into a lot of people that are trying to lose weight, you know, with the internet and, you know, a lot of people followed my weight loss. My weight loss was like daily on Facebook. People watched me lose the hundred pounds. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've seen so many people fail because they have a bad meal. They get down on themselves and just give up. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, who am I kidding? I can never be, I can never do what that guy did. You know, you Taco know, Taco Bell, right? Yeah, just yeah, right, exactly. So I'm really gonna hate myself. Let's get some Taco Bell. Yeah, but it's addictive, and, and it's almost like preying on that same primal, um, in a negative sense, subconscious desire, right, for the the red and yellow and the the, the MSG that's also just like linked in your mind to that. When you drive yeah. by it as a musician, it makes you salivate, right? Because there's there are no other options, and it, you need salt or you need something, and it's like they've got you. You know what I mean? In the same way that hydroxycut got you. Yeah. 
but but then you come over to the other side and it's like taco bell is dog food it doesn't make you salivate anymore right like yeah, once once exactly. it's out of your system for a while yeah that's it man it's uh, yeah but it, you know not weighing 300 pounds is awesome <laughs> i bet i bet yeah yeah. You know, there's a lot of old people in the world. There's a lot of fat people in the world. There's not a lot of fat old people. True. So getting into my fifties and, you know, I had, I had a personal trainer at leading up to getting sick and she did my measurements. <laughs> God bless her. She did my measurements. My measurements were 50 by 50 by 50. And I thought I, I'm SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally sponge. I'm literally an enormous tube. <laughs> Like chest, hips, waist, 50, 50, 50. Oh, that's that's how big I was. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but I mean, how do you feel now? What's different? Like what stands out the most? Um, I mean, well, yeah, now I'm like pushing. Like, I want to be an, I'm like more into people. I want to be an athlete now. Cool. Like, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not looking to be, you know, I, I aspire to things. Like right now I've really been digging on powerlifting. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but I'm being smart about it. Like, I don't really want to get into deadlifting too much. I bought a hex bar for deadlifts. I saw I that love... video you posted of your home gym. I, I was yeah. jealous. I'm almost yeah. jealous. And the thing jealous. Is, I, I, I've been doing what you and James Clear talk about. I've been focusing on one exercise yep. per workout cool. and then pop others in. It's just, you know, bench, overhead press, chin ups, squat, deadlift, rows. You know, right boom, on. meat and potatoes. So I've been really enjoying that. And um, I actually got a little air bike for the studio. Cool. Somebody was giving it away like a, like a little Airdyne Schwinn. So I've been doing some Tabatas on that and getting kicking my own butt. Yeah, there you go. See, you can just do it. And um, so I, I'm just guessing that you're not going to like outside gyms or did you hire a trainer to help no, you out? or like? I still do. I, I go to Orange Theory. Okay, cool do that a few mornings a week. I, I was doing that a lot, but now the kids are out for summer. Right. So I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I, I work a little bit at home. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always finagling them around, but I do orange theory and we also belong to the Y and then they have Y play. So you can drop the kids off and I'll work out there. We swim a lot there nice. and I do spin classes there and sometimes we we'll kickboxing or whatever. And it, all of these things you did not do before, right? Or at least no, most of them. no, no, no. Uh, oh no, I was the great joiner of gyms. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, I was the great joiner of gyms. Go the first night for thirty minutes. Go like two days later, sit in the parking lot, and say, "I give up. I'm getting pizza. It's hopeless." Yep. Being fat, man. I'm telling you, being fat is is so hopeless. It mm. feels really hopeless. You know, I mean, it's, I really have a heart for people, man. You know, it's, ugh. yeah, but it's it, it, it brings me back to this early, earlier point you brought up about perfection, which, which is almost like a cultural aesthetic that's built in everywhere, right? That, that yeah. we have to, uh, get over eventually. But some of that is from TV. Right. Yeah. Like being on TV, you're expected to kind of like go after perfection. I think that's that's changing with the Internet and just with the times like so it's even more outdated than it used to be and more incorrect than it used to be. But I think it's interesting because I, I have corollaries as well in my own life that like it was your pursuit of perfection that led you to eating a Taco Bell and just eating a bunch of junk food and, and being bedridden. Yeah. Right. It was that not the perfection and the pursuit of that. But, but the inability to attain that even a little bit, that makes you feel like a failure. So you just give up, right? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. And I mean, being in the entertainment business is intense sometimes. And sure. it was very, you know, I, you know, it, it, it can be heartbreaking. And, you know, I think for some people, they're better at, the heartbreak, like they can, you know, water off a duck's back, you know, yep. they can take it. Yep. Me, I'm kind of a, I don't know, I'm a little bit more of like a, I don't know. I, 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 I hold on to stuff sometimes. Like it's, I'm sensitive, you know, I get sure. my feelings to get hurt or, you know, and I had, you know, yeah, just, and, and though I've had a lot of great things happen in my career. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's like, 
like a hundred great things can happen to me and one thing could go wrong and then I'll just fester on that. Right. And that's one thing now that, you know, I'm feeling better. My mind is getting better. And, and now it's like, you know, I can, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally out of the woods, Abel. You know, I'm still sure, of course. having yeah, my I'm not either. but I'm better than I was. Um, and I'm able to like, not fixate on negative all the time. Like, it's like, okay, yeah. everything's cool, man. Everything's good, Lugo. Relax, breathe, breathe, yeah. you know? So, yeah, but that's, you know, yeah, no, and things are good now. I mean, I'm here in Nashville and I'm doing great stuff and, you know, talking to my buddy, Abel James. <laughs> it's pretty great, isn't it? So what about, you know, I get this a lot. People in their 50s, they're just like, what do I do now? The stuff that I used to be doing isn't working anymore. I'm not sure what to do next. Is it worth it? You know, um, what, what would you say to them? I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm not totally sold that, it, that it's such a bit. I don't, th- I don't feel that different. Yeah. Like, look at me. I, I mean, I still – people see me that grew up with me. They're like, you don't even hardly look different. Yeah. You know, I mean, guys my age look like my dad. Like, I still look like me. I still feel like me. Sure. I mean, you know, I get up a little sore in the morning and stuff. And But, you know, I don't know. I don't think that – I think that if you get on track with it and you find what works for you – I mean, I know what – I know what – I know what what, what works – what has worked for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And you just stay consistent, you know. And, and I mean, I think more than anything – you have to be passionate about it. For me, I had to be passionate about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was pas- I am passionate about health, weight loss. I mean, everything. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I spent a night at a UCLA sleep study because I was choking at night from sleep apnea, you know, and, you was know, it the weight that made that better, getting the weight off? Yeah, yeah, as soon as you lose the weight, man. Yeah, of course, because as soon as you lay down, everything comes right up on you. Mm-hmm. You know, all the weight on your face and your chest and your neck. Yes, and it, it opens the airways, too, because there's just, you know, being a singer, when people sometimes come in for voice lessons and they're, like, really overweight and they hold a lot of weight here, it's like you can hear their voices are like constipated. It's like jammed up. Huh. I didn't even think about like, oh, that. Yeah, your sure. airway needs to move. So yeah, once I, you know, once I lost some weight and started exercising, that was like, it was gone, man. It was, yeah. it was just gone. So, you know, and, and I was having, you know, the, the, the blood sugar things like, like if I would bend, bend over, to, to pick something up, I would get this like shaky thing where I start and I felt hot and like sweaty mm-hmm. and I would run upstairs and I would like make like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like I would need something that would just like hit me with yeah. sugar or yeah. if there were like pretzels, I used to like, like pretzels and chips and then I would slam it and yeah. then it would take about 45 minutes and then I would come back to planet earth. But, and then I had this like constant pain like, especially when I ate, it was almost like a angina or like a, you know, like a chest yeah. pain, Yeah, you know? So yeah, it was just, yeah. So, so a lot of that, so going back to people in their fifties, a lot of times people in their fifties, when it's like, they come to that realization, like I got to get my act together. You know, it, it's, you know, it's like the old, the old saying, nobody goes to confession the night before prom. <laughs> sure. See what I'm saying? Right. Yep. So who, when, when are you going to start watching Abel James video and try fasting? <laughs> when you've run every, when you've run your game, when you run your game to the end and you go, all right, you got this crazy guy and you know, with the, with the, with the battle like out in the, uh, the forest, I'm going to do what he said. You know, but, but that's last. That's the end of the road, man. It's I'm like, I'm the cleanup right, guy. I know. Finally, you know, it's like I've been beaten into submission when you're out of all good ideas. And that's what happens in your 40s and 50s. Sure. You run and out. That that sheen of your 20s and 30s is, is starting to go away. And yeah. all of a sudden you're like, wow. I'm like, no, it's not happening, man. You know, I'm starting to like, you know, you know, remind myself of my dad. Which isn't a bad thing, but you know, it's mm-hmm. you're changing. So, but I think that no matter what anybody's age is, they can turn their life around. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, the 
having the mental attitude of seeing themselves, like imagining yourself, like, you know, whatever it is, fishing, walking, you know, whatever it is that you dream that is not what's happening. Mm -hmm. you know? And you got it. You got to be down, you know, you, you, so it's just my opinion. There's suffering involved in this. Well, losing mm -hmm. 100 pounds isn't just it doesn't just fly off. Right. The other thing too that I found about losing large amounts of weight is it's like a moving target. Because just when you figure it all out, it stops kind of working. Mm -hmm. Like your body figures it out, and it's like, oh, okay, so you're going to do this at that, and then okay, now I got you covered. So it was a constant kind of battle of tweaking, and I find that my my like my base like i want to i want to i want to live a little leaner than i am now so that's what's been going on the last few months is trying to go you know and, and i mean i'm not like you know i mean so, like vegans talk about like you know food density and eating less de but i just can't eat that kind of food so now you know it's like i have to figure out kind of like what can work for me yeah. my i used to think that the only way to lose weight was to run, do yoga, and eat salad. Mm -hmm. Now, I appreciate all those things, and I do all those things now. But but when I was three hundred pounds, you know, I had I didn't want to have anything to do with kale. Yeah, kale, I mean, if kale was on the burger, I was like, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not eating that, right? And I don't want anything to do with yoga. That's for like skinny little, you know, yeah. stick people, you know, sure. gumbies and running, <laughs> running. You know, I'm hobbling, right? So. I had that in my mind that that was the only way to lose weight. And that's why when I started to learn about really the intermittent fasting, yeah, like I was like, oh, 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 so it's not, you know, like, oh, so I can eat like two meals a day and they can all both be like hearty. Right. Like, oh, oh, this is a great this idea. This changes everything. <laughs> this changes everything. And then when you start intermittent, because the thing that's weird about intermittent fast, am I talking too much? Should you be no, talking? No, go for it. Oh, am I cool? Okay. Yeah. Am I doing all right? You're doing great. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's so weird to be on here. Yeah. I, I, used to do I don't know what it feels like. <laughs> I'm not going to do it on your show, but you have that voice, man. Good Lord. Oh, thank you. That means a <laughs> lot coming from a vocal like, coach. You could be voice. You're a voiceover assault rifle. You got <laughs> perfect voice. Anyway, but um, the thing when I first started the intermittent fasting, all I used to think about was like, oh my God, how long do I have to fast? Then you get into it, then you're like, oh my God, how long do I have to eat? Yeah. <laughs> now I want to like the shorter the eating window, the better. Because, you know, and then and then the, the beautiful part about fasting, if anybody's watching this and has never done fasting, Fasting has success built into it because when you start to fast and you stop eating so much carbohydrate, your appetite stops yeah. being so crazy. Because yep. I always used to think that, like, how am I ever going to lose weight? I'm hungry all the time. I felt like, like that too. I'm eating and thinking about the next meal. Like, I'm never satisfied. Yeah. I'm never I, – I could eat until I'm gorged out and feel sick, but I'm never satisfied. Mm-hmm. That's how it's built. That's that's how all those products work from the 80s, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We have to uh, decondition that. And that's, I guess, kind of what I mean. It's just like starting with a blank slate, uh, you know, and just clearing out all that nonsense that we've accumulated over the course of our lives, all this, all this subconscious conditioning and marketing in a lot of cases, and then just being like, wait a second. What works? What am I after here? Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. it's so great that you are, um, you found a lot of success in simplifying. But one thing I want to want to ask you in particular, because a lot of people have been asking about this lately, is how do you go from uh, either bedridden or, or disabled or injured or not able to work out and being sedentary and not working out for a long time? How do you go from that and start and then keep going? I, I started with a fast. Okay. I, I just, I started juicing wow. and I just yeah. gave up. I just, I just, you know, it was weird. You know, you know, the old adage of everything, like the way we were always taught was that you have to taper off of everything, mm -hmm. you know, like you got to cut like, and, but that's not the case for everyone. And that's not to say that that doesn't work. Sure. But for me, it was like, 
I, it, I had to, it was like, I had to put a line in the sand and I'm like, that's it. I'm drinking kale. Like, that's it. I'm going to be just like this, this dude in fat, sick and nearly dead, yeah, you know? And, awesome. uh, you know, yeah. And, and I just, yeah, I just had to sever it, you know I mean? Cause once you start losing weight, you get a little, you start to get momentum too. Mm-hmm. You do. You know, those first few pounds and then all of a sudden you're like, when you go into double digits and you've lost 10 pounds, you're like, okay, you know, you know, and then of course you got to go out and overeat and blow it and go down to six. But, but you know, that's, it's been that, you know, like that old graph, like people think success is this, but it's like that. Right. It's weird. I found weight loss to be a little like that. And it's not just like metabolism. It's, it's like a lot. It's me because I, it's like I can, I do good. And then it's like, I, I just have to eat. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, I, I'm still, I still live with, is there still some, some foothold footholds in me or, you know, like the claws are a little bit of still in me, Yeah. but it's getting better. I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm, 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 you know, yeah, I'm learning, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, the, the getting on to, to, getting on to real food is the game. I mean, you know, and that's what you're about. I mean, you know, it's like the more I can, for people like in their fifties too, you know, that have been, you know, bombarded with, you know, carbohydrate filled food with shelf life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If you buy something and you can wait two years to eat it, throw it in the garbage. (laughs) Save it for the apocalypse. <laughs> yes, it's like, yeah. If 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 you know if it doesn't disintegrate, chances are your stomach's not going to do so good with it, right? Yeah. But uh, but yeah, just start. You know, like the thing that I that I really got into was like, can I track the history of my food? So here, you know, here's a tomato. Where'd that come from? You know, tomato plant. Here's an apple. Where'd it come from? Or an apple tree. Here's a chicken breast. Where'd it come from? A chicken. Here's a slice of pizza. Where'd it come from? A lab. Yeah. That's a that's a, that's an experiment. Yep. Now that's not to say that there's not elements of it that may be whole foodie, but that's an, that's an experiment. So the more and I, I I'm a meal prepper. I um, saw that. Oh, I wanted to talk about that. You have an awesome video. Maybe we can link to that. Of what? What is it? It's uh, 19 meals in 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Talk I've been meal that. prepping for probably two years, maybe close to three. And I, I, you know, meal prepping is an 80s thing, except it was like, you know, 20 meals of chicken breast and broccoli, right? And skin. And Tupperware no, parties. You know, Crept onto George Foreman with all the fat taken off. Oh yeah. You squeeze it out. I want this thing dry. No salt because salt holds water. That's right. You know, so it's like we're going to make the worst possible meal and you're going to eat it eight. You're going to eat a small amount of it every two hours. It's torture. It's just to drive your grayling crazy. But, (laughs) But yeah, I do meal prep and that's been really good for me, you know, because the other thing too with me. I don't do good winging it. I'm not a winging it. You know, I'm better off like winging it once in a while is cool, but the more structured I am, I mean, I'm a, my fitness pal. I do the zero app for the, for the, for the fasting. I just bought, I don't know if you can see it there, a Fitbit icon. Oh, Ionic. Check that out. I haven't even yeah, seen those yet. Tracker. It's got steps, how many calories burn. It's been interesting. It's getting me to walk more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like just get myself moving more. So one thing that my wife and I have really enjoyed doing in our own lives is trying to treat it more like a game. And my, my wife, Allison, is a former professional video game player. So that just kind of like is built in. But um, uh, that can be really powerful, too, when you start doing that with your own movement. And it's like I, I wear a watch on my runs. And so I can see exactly on the map where I went, where I slowed down, what my heart rate was. Uh, actually, I haven't put it out yet. But uh, there's a musician who is another listener on this uh, show who will be coming out who who wears one of those for his shows and and uh he's the lead singer and and plays guitar and so like he can tell which numbers are the most energetic on a graph after the show it's just like a super cool use of it one warning though is there there have been a couple of studies that have come out about these fitness trackers and and what it does to people's behavior and there is a tendency to be like oh 
I crushed 15,000 steps today. I'm going to eat that pizza. And so people tend to overeat because they see like proof that they were so good. So be careful of that one. Well, you know, what's weird about this is that I synced it. I got, I've had it a little over a week. Um, and I synced it through the Fitbit app to my fitness pal. And when I work out, it gives me extra calories to eat, but I don't, I don't eat into them. I'm like, because I've got, I've still got my, my, my fitness pal thing I'm set up is active to lose 1.5 pounds a week or one pound a week. Just kind of keeps me just, just a little below maintenance because I I have a tendency to just eat a little above it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, I think it gives me 1,990 calories, but like when I did, I did uh, an orange theory class on Monday and they, I mean, they, it was medieval. They tortured us. Yes. And it gave me like 600 calories. Of food. I'm like, well, that's not the point. I don't want to eat that. <laughs> You're right. That is, that's spit out by like pretty much every different company that makes those watches and the apps, you know. And yeah, it's just, so you, you have to be careful of that. That's one thing that I've noticed. And, and part of that, I'm sure, is going from like my 20s to my 30s is that like I hated under eating ever when I was, you know, well, until like basically I turned 30. And then like, especially once I really started doing fasting and experimenting with it and then doing exercise fasted, including like long runs or long hikes or whatever, uh, I'm just like, oh, it's actually really nice (laughs) under eating sometimes. It feels really good uh, to do. The thing is, it feels good later, right? So it's just like learning that, that muscle, delayed gratification, you know. It's real. Yeah. Um, you know, there are so many things that I want to talk about, but one of the other ones is um, because you are a vocal coach, uh, one of the unfortunate things I think about modern, especially Western society, is how like there are singers and then there are people who don't sing or can't sing or whatever. Whereas like historically, everyone danced, everyone sung. It was a community yeah. thing. It's like part of being human, right? So I was thinking, what are some some vocal exercises maybe or even breathing exercises that um, are, are for singers kind of, but everyone should do? Best thing is to tongue out. Yeah? Yeah, let me see. I got my piano on. Hold on. Hold on. You guys are going to get a little free voice lesson here. No, this is great. <laughs> Yeah, so like E is a very tight vowel, and the, the opposite is the tongue out, ah, right? Ah, Which that's okay. like the baby sound almost, right? Yeah. So if you think about as we as we go up, we naturally want to tighten up. So this mm-hmm. exercise will actually um, it almost like I, I I thought I invented it. I don't think I did, but in my mind, I, I was the originator of this. It's proof <laughs> on the Fat Burning Man podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can send me to my PayPal, Jake. No, <laughs> there you go. Right. So as, as you go up and everything you want is one. Well, actually, it started with I had a baritone many years ago. This kid, a Christian rock guy, and he wanted to sing high. And, and it was just like, oh, my God. It was like teaching a hippo to, to tap dance, you know, <laughs> this poor kid. And he, and he put all his heart into it. And yeah. one night I was laying there and I was like. I had actually called a voice coach buddy of mine and I'm like, Hey man, can you take this dude? Like, I, I just, I don't know what else to do. I can't, I'm not getting anywhere. So he's like, no, you just keep at it. I'm like, all right. And I thought about him. And I thought about how his vocal cords were tightening up as he went up. And I thought, well, wait a second. If we go up and I go, ah, that's going to push. Like I almost felt like I'd be inside his larynx, keeping it open. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I went back to, we went and did our lesson and we did it and it, and it worked. And it was like basically, yeah, that was it. Wow. That exercise is, I mean, it's, you know, you see that in, in yoga, people do that and during, yep. during, during Cobra pose, you know, that, you know, that, that, that whole, the kiss face. Yeah. Yeah. If you just start doing that every day. In half steps. That's just an arpeggio. One, three, five octaves. Yeah. Yeah. And go all the way up until you know, until you can't go anymore. Right on. That's great. But yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah. 
That's a really great exercise. Well, and, and, and people don't really think about exercising their jaw, their face, their tongue, and all of that, but uh, it's it's legit. I mean, it's well, something yeah, worth yeah. focusing the thing on. Too is like that also combats the whole forward. Like mm-hmm. everything in our life is forward, right? The piano, the guitar, the dishes, the computer, the the the, the iPad, you know, the the phone, you know, the do- everything's this way. So when you start to like open up and go. You know, it's, yeah. you start to open that up. It's you're you're like fighting you're fighting gravity a little bit. Yeah, and you can do that in in like sun salutation with your hands rotated out, mm-hmm. which opens up your nice. your retracts your scapula. It opens up your shoulders. Yeah, you doing that with the tongue out. Yeah, now you're like, yeah, you're you know that's like what does the monks do? You know, like that's yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. Another thing that I read in your book that you really emphasize is the importance of warming up, which applies not just to like working out, but like working out your voice, singing, playing music, all that. So can you harp on that for a little bit? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's a muscle, Um, especially as you become more proficient as a singer, Mm -hmm. because it's easier to not warm up. Right. You know what I mean? I'm definitely guilty of that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if I was trying to do... You're like, I have to warm up before I do squats to get my shoulder, you know. There's somebody like Rich Froning, he could go in there and put 275 on, just start hitting it. Yeah. Because it's more flexible naturally. But that's where singers can get themselves into trouble because they've got the chops to get through to to um, to you know, they got they have the chops to kind of sing beyond where they're at at the moment. Yep. But then, you know, you, you start doing the wear and tear in your voice and then, you know. That's a whole other story. But yeah, warming up basically stretches the vocal cords. I mean, the big warm, the biggest warm up ever is the lip roll. Yeah. Like you go backstage at like Metallica, he's doing, you go backstage <laughs> no at Dion, she's great. doing it. You go backstage at, you know, Eminem, he's do, like, everybody does it. It's just. <laughs> and what that does is that enables you to go through your bridges and breaks without actually forming a vowel. So Mm -hmm. it's equivalent to like sitting down before you bench and doing a set with the bar. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to sprint, like jogging a couple laps, get your body elastic and, and, you know, kind of send it, start getting the the signals firing. But that lip roll, a lot of people, what's funny is that, I have a big mouth and big lips. Like lip roll is easy for me. Yeah. And I remember I, I, I bought this book from this voice teacher from the eighties and he said, uh, Oh, if you, uh, if you have problems with the lip roll, you can't do it. Lift your cheeks like this. And I'm like, what's he talking about? Like I thought everybody could do the lip roll. Yeah. And then when I started teaching. I'm like, Oh wow. A lot of people can't do the lip roll. Really? <laughs> so you lift I didn't cheeks. even know that. Yeah. If they have small lips, you know, like huh. or some weird mouth structure, but I literally did that in the shower this morning. Huh? <laughs> I literally did that exercise in the shower this morning to, to warm up before that's, I started that's recording. The best today. time to do it. Yeah. That's, you know, and you know, and, and you know, you know what the, the one, two, three punch of that is netty bottle. Oh, okay. Netty bottle, clear out the sinuses sure. then start doing the lip roll. Oh my God. You want to talk about like, Clearing the way. Cool. I didn't even think about that. Clears all this up. And the hot, you know, the hot shower. And uh, another good thing with the shower is like touching your toes and letting the hot water pound on your back. Hmm. Clears up all this. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, man, one of the best things anybody could ever do for their voice is eating unprocessed foods. I'm so glad you said that. And the story. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Meats and greens, like you stick to like food. Oh my God, ease up. Don't go crazy with all the sauces. Just like more, mm-hmm. like normal. Like oh yeah, man. Because you as soon as because I I have found the most inflammatory food for singing is bread. Bread mm-hmm. is so acidic to the mm-hmm. vocal cords mm-hmm. because it, it it releases all that mucus into here and it makes everything heavy. Yeah. So it'd be like the difference between running in shorts and running with a rucksack. That makes sense, yeah. You know, so if you got if you're eating pizza, you're running with a ru- you're singing with a rucksack, yep. basically. So more so than dairy, because that's kind of one that's harped on by a lot of people. Dairy's too, right? bad. I, I find bread to be the worst. Yeah. But yeah, all of it. Dairy, 
you know, some people, some people it's nuts. It's nuts are acidic oh, yeah. to throw. Like if I mm. eat like some cashew and man, I can pound cashews too. Yeah. If I start pounding cashews, it's like immediately I'm like, <clears throat> I can feel that, <clears throat> that little, yeah, that little acidic. Yep. But like, you know, you talking about in the one podcast about when you and your wife went and got those allergy tests and she came back with like no allergies or whatever. Yeah. You, you know, not everybody's going to have the same thing. Right. You know, so, I mean, there's, look, there's people that smoke and drink and sing till they're 70. <laughs> yeah. And then there's people that like, you know, they drink too much and like their voice is shot for two weeks. Yeah. So you kind of got to know yourself. Yeah. I mean, obviously the cleaner life you live, the better shot at, at all this, you know, right. health and happiness and hitting high C's. <laughs> you have. <laughs> What are some of the, we're almost out of time, I can't believe it, but like, what are some of the, the benefits of being in, in shape specifically for performance or, or, or music or, or people listen like with their eyes, hmm. people listen with their eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, so, all right. So yeah, I'm, um, I, I'm really more, I'm almost more of a performer than just a pure musician. Yeah. I love to entertain, give me the mic. Like I'm funny. I got all that stuff going on. When I started gaining weight, I didn't want to be on stage, man. Cause mm -hmm. I just kept thinking everybody was looking at me like, what's this guy? Who's, you know, what's this guy? you know, this, you know what I mean? And, and wow. yeah, I think it's, a, it's a lot of self-esteem stuff. I think once you start packing on weight, it can really make you not want to be, you know, on stage and also yeah. just, just in general, I mean, I, I don't know. I found myself, I never thought of myself as an introvert, but those last couple of years, man, I was becoming more of an introvert. I remember I would go places, especially work functions and I wouldn't say any, I would just stand like I was, you know, and I used to be like, Hey man, like the life of the party. And all of a sudden I was just standing over there by the chips, making it happen, man. Mm. focusing on the food, yeah. you know, and I, and I didn't want to, you know, I, it was like, I almost became like social wallpaper, you know, and this was a guy that in my twenties, I mean, I looked like Bon Jovi, <laughs> like, you know, I walk into a room, it was, it was on and cracking, man. Sure. I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. <laughs> you know, I went from that to like a guy that didn't want anybody to look at him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. Let's, I just want to get through this so I can, you know, I can hit, uh, I can hit McDonald's on the way home and, you know, yeah. Oh, sneaky food too, boy. I, I used, cause you know, when you start gaining weight and, you know, my wife, she was very supportive, but I think she was scared. You know, she's like, is this guy going to check out? Yeah. But I would like go to the drive through eat. Then I would literally like throw everything out. And then I'd run, when I go in the house, I go right into the bathroom and brush my teeth you know, try to get the smell of, you know, saturated fat and salt off me. Yeah. So, but I, I think it all tied in because, you know, those are all non-esteemable acts, you know, I mean, you start sneaking around and not wanting to be seen and not wanting to deal with things and not returning phone calls and, you know, and I, and I had, I have, it's still there and it's still vibrant, but I had a very, very vibrant YouTube channel in the 2000s, millions of views. And, you know, it was all singing and guitar nerd stuff and amp shootouts. And those last few years, I shot every video from behind the camera. Hmm. I didn't want to be in the videos anymore. I was always shooting somebody else. And, um, I, you know, a couple of people would comment, you know, they'd say, why aren't you shooting your videos anymore? And a couple of people even hit me up. They're like, hey man, I, I saw a picture of you. You're, you're gaining weight. Are you all right? I said, you know, we don't see in the videos anymore. And, you know, yeah, I started getting fat on American Idol. That sucked. <laughs> that sucked. That's got to be one of the worst places. <laughs> that sucked. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. You, know, you can't even think of a more soul bending experience than than being on a, you know, a, basically a reality talent show. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, it's like and, and what was funny, I after one of the seasons I ran into my hairdresser and he just was flat out. He's like, dude, you looked horrible. And it was like, man, it hurt. It was like, it, it was like so painful, man. 
Yeah, I bet. That's a rough thing to just to like walk up to somebody and say, but I can totally envision that happening in entertainment. I, I, you know? I, was, I was doing these kids bop uh, commercials, these uh, records and producing them. And I was like the poster child for it. I was, I was rounding up the kids dressed in a, I was doing the kindergarten cop thing. You ever see that? Mar- Mar- sure, yeah, thing? Yeah. I was making them do push ups and everything. And towards the end of this whole cycle that we were in, we were doing these, these promo videos and it was like close ups on my head. And the owner of the record label said, he says, you literally look like a pumpkin. <laughs> he told me that. That's rough. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, well, welcome to LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But I mean, you're rocking it now. It seems like you're yeah. back, right? Feeling you know, good. Five years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you but look awesome. Thing, you know, that, and that's why, like, going back to your question about people, you know, what do they do if they're in their 50s? And, you know, we all have redemption. Like, we, we all have the opportunity for redemption. We all have another shot. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, because a lot of times guys or girls, you know, they, they it's like they peak in high school, you know, and then it's just this endless decline. But, yep. you know, I've had a number of peaks. You know <laughs> what I mean? You know, I've, sure. I've yeah. Yeah, it's a I've been on I've been the, the roller coaster sometimes, but you know I'm an artist. You know, I mean, you know, yep. yeah, you're crazy up and down. I, it's interesting though. I, I didn't really th- think about that though. The uh, the gaining weight, um, imposter syndrome. You know, is what people call it now, which we all, especially in entertainment or performance of any kind, we all suffer from that. I certainly do. I, I'm I deal better with it now than I used to, but it's like it's always there. But I didn't think of like gaining weight that accelerates it, you know, or enhances that in, in some way, you know, it t- makes total sense though. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of TV, man, they shoot it and you can see yourself on the, they have the screen off to the side where like the line producers are doing lighting and adjusting. So you're sitting there talking to somebody and you can see out of the <laughs> corner of the eye that you look like a pumpkin. <laughs> But I got to stay focused and I have to sound relatively intelligent, you know, but I lived. Well, I'm glad you don't look like a pumpkin anymore. (laughs) Dashing, if I do say so. I'm going more for the asparagus look. There you go. (laughs) All right. We're out of time, James. But um, before we go, please tell folks what you're working on and where they can follow you and find you. Oh. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm a record producer and a voice coach, and uh, I do a lot of work on Skype now. This is like the last number of years. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. They can go to jameslugomusic.com, or I think I've got Facebook is slash jameslugomusic. I think same thing, Instagram. I'm not as much of an Instagrammer. Yeah. More of a Facebook, YouTube guy. But, uh, yeah, and my YouTube is James Lugo. So, I mean, if, yeah, if anything, and honestly, if there's anybody out there that ever needs any help with this, man, and I mean, obviously, if they're here, they're in the right place because what I, I went through your whole site today and I was looking at all the things. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, uh, I mean, this is the answer, man. Thanks for saying that. Been doing this a while. It's certainly not perfect. Yeah. It's much messier than And I it. saw, I saw an old <laughs> fat picture of you playing guitar. That's right. I was there. I was like, look at him. That's right. Yeah, that was like almost 10 years ago now. Yeah, Yeah, well, you know, your story of of going vegan and getting sick and your house burning and not like out of ideas and the doctors keep telling you, you know, eat less and run more. And, you know, like, I man, that touched my heart. You were huge, man. You were a huge influence on me. You'll never know. You will never know. I mean, you're part of like, I mean, and I'm worth saving. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I'm a good person. I got I see that. something to say. I got kids. And I was dying. Yeah. And, I, you know, really watching that video with you and Amir, I watched that video hundreds of times. And I just, I just, I, you know, I, I conceded. To, so so what, uh, one more thing before we go is like, yeah. if, you're, if you're fat and you're really lost and don't know what to do, the first thing you have to do is just admit that you don't know anything. And that's such a great thing, man. Yeah. When you completely accept defeat. And for me, that was what was in the way. Because 
I grew up in the gym business and I was a trainer mm -hmm. and I worked in the, in the, in, in, you know, in the eighties, but like no matter what anybody would tell me, I was always like, yeah, but you know what? Yeah, but I always knew, I always knew. Mm -hmm. And you know, at 300 pounds, 51 years old, chest pains, I, I was, I, I got, okay, I get it. I don't know. I don't know anything. And one other thing, and then I'll stop. <laughs> When I first started fasting four years ago, man, people were like freaking out. Yeah. Like, like, how'd you lose the weight? I'm like, I'm fasting. They're like, what? Dude, that's <laughs> terrible. It's the worst thing you can do. Your metabolism is going to go. You're going to get here to do that. But now it's not like that. Hmm. Everybody said, how'd you lose the weight? I go, oh, yeah, I fast. They're like, oh, you're doing the intermittent fasting, the 16-8? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? They you get it now, huh? Yeah. Like four years, I've seen it. Cool. I didn't the know that. that. I've been doing it like now it's like people are like, oh, really? Like my friend does that. Huh. Or is that that thing? You know, is that paleo or is that, you know, what is that? You know, and so things are changing. That's cool. It's yeah. Like, and that's so interesting. Like when too. You, when you started out, you were going after Julian Michaels. <laughs> yep, that's right. I was. It's changing. She was the king, the queen back then. You know what I mean? She like she was everywhere. She was on TV. She was top of the podcast charts. And I'm like, this won't do. This is how I got sick, you know. Yeah. And uh, and so anyway, it's been a, a long wiggly path, <laughs> as we can agree on. But um, I'm I'm just so happy that it's getting out there. But intermittent fasting is so interesting because it's one of those things where like I'm a huge proponent of it. Have been pretty much the whole time. Went on national television raving about it, and I couldn't believe that they let me. <laughs> but I think it was only because they were trying to make me look crazy. But it's one of those things that's like it never comes back to you. It's like you don't make money from fasting. That's why it, it didn't originally get out there. But I'm so glad right. that people right. get it because it's like we all have the power. Uh, we, and it trains that muscle, right? Once you start fasting, it's like, oh, we can do this. And I don't have to do anything to do this. It's it's amazing. Oh man! But imagine anyway, going we, into, imagine going into like a like a, a focus, you know, a bunch of CEOs and going, I got a business plan. Right. We're going to tell everybody not to eat, <laughs> and they're like, and your business plan? Like, oh, that's it. Like, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. Hence the wiggly path, but it's good for you. Anyway, James, thank you so much for coming on, man. This is great. All right, man. Thanks so much, Abel. Hey folks, as promised, this is Abel James once again with a quick reading from my number one best-selling new book of humor, Designer Babies Still Get Scabies. And this one relates to the latest episode with James Lugo. <laughs> and it's called Bling. Why you always got to rap about bling, bling, bling? We all came to hear you sing and feel real truth that leaves a sting. Not hear you brag about cash and things. I drive a car with dents and dings. What are you going to do with all those rings? Are you a puppet who clings to strings? We don't need your world of kings. Here's another one about auto-tune, which any of, any of those singers out there will totally understand why I'm so annoyed by where music has gone, as are many other musicians. No more auto-tune. Please, no more soulless auto-tune. I'd rather listen to some improvising baboon than some talentless, famous corporate goon who merged man with machine because he can't even croon. You know, spells don't just come from witches on brooms or wizards chanting and tinkering with runes. In fact, when we sing in our cars and bedrooms, we send prayers straight up to the moon. Though today's entranced preteens may swoon, tomorrow's singularity is coming quite soon. And it won't be pretty, I humbly assume, because it's not technological utopia that looms. These robots, like sirens, lead us to doom. Talking about you, Drake. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go a little deeper into the sarcasm here. Everything on the internet is true. I can't wait to clone myself by myself right off the shelf. My own personal robotic elf following me everywhere from Guam to Guelph. Then I'll implant the internet inside my brain so computers can save me from boredom and pain. I bet I'll be even better at video games. I'll be smarter than you instead of the same. Because everything on the internet is true. A perfectly democratic meritocracy that bleeds red, white, and blue. You can even buy me new shoes. The internet is for me and you. <laughs>
And since James was a coach on American Idol, I decided to uh, read this one today. She bought all her hits. Setting in the cheap seats, those pop stars beyond fleek. In real life, they're a bit meek, but even puppets can learn to speak. She bought all her hits on the radio. Then they gave her a reality show. Little people like you and me don't know. Stars come from above, not below. All right, one more before we go. And this one is short and sweet. Please don't call me an influencer. Please don't call me an influencer. Nothing even rhymes with influencer. <laughs> okay, so the book is Designer Babies Still Get Scabies. You can find it with a free audiobook over at designerbabiesbook.com. Also, if you, you just want to look on Amazon, it's available internationally. It's doing really well. Shouldn't be too hard to find unless it's censored. <laughs> Could happen. So anyway, designerbabiesbook.com. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much once again. We'll be in touch. This episode is brought to you by listeners like you and Future Greens. Let me ask you this. How many servings of veggies have you had so far today? Hmm, how about this week? Like it or not, recent studies show that 9 out of 10 of us do not eat the recommended amount of daily fruits and veggies. Now, if you're one of those uncompromising health nuts who gets more than 10 servings of veggies a day... You can ignore what I'm about to say. Now, for the rest of you, listen up. If you're looking to improve your health and increase the amount of nutrition in your diet with fruits and veggies without the sugar, you're going to love our new creation called Future Greens. Future Greens is packed with vitamins, minerals, and filling fiber from whole organic veggies, sprouts, algae, and berries, including kale, beet, parsley, collard greens, cauliflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, spirulina, chlorella, blueberries, raspberries, and much more. We think it tastes great, and we even heard that some kids think that Future Greens taste pretty good too. All of our products at Wild Superfoods are lab-tested for purity and potency and formulated according to the latest cutting-edge developments in research, science, and medicine. We have extremely high standards when it comes to our health, and we know you do too. Guaranteed nutrition no matter where you are. That's our promise to you. So check out Wild Superfoods and please get in touch to tell us what you think. Just head over to wildsuperfoods.com to get the scoop on Future Greens and you can save 20% when you select subscribe and save. All you have to do is visit wildsuperfoods.com to get the deal. Thanks for listening. Well, hey there, listener. This is Abel one more time, and I just want to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Fat Burning Man Show. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you might be listening to or watching this show right now. And if you have a second, please leave me a quick review for the Fat Burning Man Show. I read every single one of them, and every time you leave a review, it gives us a little boost in the rankings, and that helps other people find this show. And if you can think of someone else who might enjoy and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or a family member. And if they're like, what is this fat burning man thing? That's a really silly name. You could be like, you're right, but here's the deal. We've recorded over 250 episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show with thought leaders in health from all over the world. And so far, we've won four awards, hitting number one in health in more than eight countries internationally. We have more than 30 million downloads already, but we're just getting started. I can't believe any of this, by the way, and, and couldn't do any of this without you. So thanks once again. But here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode of the Fat Burning Man Show for free with zero outside advertisements, no outside sponsors, and no corporate overlords. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. We'll give you a, a second here just to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes, transcripts, and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show for free. Better yet, Enter your email at fatburningman.com, 
sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide so you can take your health into your own hands right now, along with a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free goodies with a bonus surprise straight to your inbox. This is Abel James signing off. Thank you so much for listening once again, and have a great week.